In this video, I'm going to show you how to find trigonometric ratios placed in a circle, and then we're also going to take a look at reciprocal trigonometric ratios. So to start, let's look at the coordinates in terms of the primary trig ratios. So let's say that we have a point P. Let's place that on the circle. And let's say that P of theta has the coordinates x and y. So I'm going to draw a line here to represent the radius. And this is my angle theta. And I'm going to draw a triangle, a right triangle, right here. So since the coordinates are x and y, we're going to say this is a distance of x, and this height is a distance of y, and the radius is r. So I can link these three values by using Pythagoras. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Now, using this triangle on the circle, we can obtain the primary trig ratios. So to start off with, let's take a look at sine theta. So remember that sine theta is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, it will be y divided by r. Cos theta is opposite, sorry, is adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So we have now x divided by r. And then tan theta is opposite divided by adjacent, so we have our y divided by our x. Now, one of the things that you'll find useful here is that I can multiply both sides by r, and then I'm actually going to be able to get a value for y. So we can actually say that y is equal to the radius times sine theta. And then we can also say that x is equal to the radius times cos theta. So now we can describe the coordinates of any point P theta as x, y, but even better, I can now say that x, which is r cos theta, and y, which is r times sine theta. So this is true for any point um, P of theta at the intersection of the terminal arm of an angle theta. So any point that's on the circle. Let's take a look at something uh, before we go on to the reciprocals and then taking a look at examples. So we want to take a look at where sine, cos, and tan are positive and negative. Um, and that depends on which quadrant it lies in. So here is one way to remember it. So I'm going to actually show you how to find where it's positive and negative. And then we have, I'm going to introduce you a little mnemonic device that I use. All right, so let's say that the angle is in quadrant one. So I know that this is my theta value. And I'm going to draw a triangle to the x-axis. And all of these values going in this right direction, this will be a positive value going vertically. This is also a positive value when I name this point here. And the radius is always going to be a positive value because it's the radius. So this will always be positive. So sine theta, remember it's opposite divided by my hypotenuse, will be positive divided by positive that will give me a positive value. Cos theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and both of those are also positive to give me a positive value. Tan theta is opposite divided by adjacent, and both of those are also positive, and when I divide, I get a positive value. Not much interesting things happening here. So let's take a look at the second quadrant. So I'm going to draw my triangle again. Always draw your triangle with the x-axis. Um, that's how we measure angles. Okay. Uh, we're going to place our theta on the bottom here. And this time, because the x value is going in the negative direction, we're going to place this as a negative value. The x value, or sorry, the y value in this direction is positive. And remember, the radius is always positive, so this would be a positive value. All right, now taking a look at the theta in reference to here, sine theta is going to be positive divided by positive, which equals positive. Cos theta is our adjacent, which is negative, divided by positive. So that's going to be negative. And tan theta is going to be opposite divided by adjacent. So it's going to be positive divided by negative, which equals negative. So you can continue the other ones on your own and see if you get the same thing. I'll pause and let you try them on your own. 
Okay, so I hope you pause the video to try this on your own. And so this is what you should end up getting. So in the third quadrant, we have negative, negative, positive. In the fourth quadrant, we have negative, positive, negative. So what we see is that in the first quadrant, all three of the trig ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive. So we can see that all are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant. Tan in the third. And cosine in the fourth. <coughs> so one mnemonic device that I used to I like to use is that all in the first students for the second quadrant take for the third quadrant and then C is the word calculus. So all students take calculus. So we have all are positive sine, tan, and cosine. So all students take calculus. A nice mnemonic device to help you remember which quadrants um, the positive trig ratio is in. And this is going in a counterclockwise direction. All right, next we're going to take a look at the reciprocal trig ratios. So this is something that's probably new. And we're going to find these ratios um, based on uh, sine, cosine, and tan. So if I bring down what we had before, sine theta, remember, was y divided by r. Cos theta is x divided by r. And tan theta is y divided by x. So if you want to take a look at the reciprocal, Reciprocal means that we take the numerator and the denominator and we flip them. So this means that sine theta will now become 1 over sine theta, which is equal to r divided by y. Cos theta will become 1 divided by cos theta, which equals r divided by x. And lastly, we have 1 over tan theta, which equals x divided by y. Now these are used kind of often, I guess, and so we're going to give them a name. So the reciprocal of sine is called cosecant. So we'll put cosecant theta. The reciprocal of cos is called secant theta. And the reciprocal of tan, tangent, is called cotangent. Now, these actually also have abbreviations, so I'm going to write them down here. So cosecant is CSC theta, so that equals 1 over sine theta, or 1 divided by sine theta. Secant theta is 1 divided by cos theta, so that's SEC. And then cotangent theta is abbreviated COT theta. And that's the reciprocal of tan theta. So these three are the reciprocal trig ratios. And it's handy to have them memorized so that you can use them um, easily, just like you've already memorized sine, cos, and tan. Now one thing to remember, or to know, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is that the quadrants that we just did up here were sine, tan, and cos are positive. It's corresponding trig ratio, or sorry, it's corresponding reciprocal ratio is also going to be positive. So sine is positive in the second quadrant, and so is cosecant. Tan is positive in the third quadrant, and so is cotangent. And then cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, and so is its reciprocal secant theta. All right, let's take a look at an example. Um, to see how to apply this. So we have the point negative 2, 7. It lies on the terminal arm of an angle theta in standard position. What is the exact value of each trig ratio? So plotting the point, we have negative 2 and 7. So it's approximately here. So what I'll do is I'll draw in the triangle. We know this is 7, and we can either just put 2 or you can put negative 2 to help you remember that this is negative. So the angle is this angle here. <coughs> but I can still use this triangle here 
to calculate what the ratio is. So in order for me to figure out all the different trig ratios, I also need r. So I'm going to calculate r first. So r squared is negative 2 squared plus 7 squared. So r squared is 4 plus 49, which equals 53. And r is the square root of 53. Now, because I asked you to find the exact value, I'm not going to change root 53 into its decimal value. Okay. So sine theta, if I'm looking for sine theta, I can actually use the same idea that this angle here, which I'll call theta with little r, actually will give me the same ratio as this theta here. So when I'm looking for theta starting from the standard position, it's actually enough to find um, the trig ratio based on just this triangle. So sine theta is the opposite, which is 7, divided by my hypotenuse, which is root 53. And then its reciprocal is cosecant theta. So I just have to take the reciprocal of my fraction. So this will be root 53 over 7. Cos theta is going to be adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And then its reciprocal secant theta is going to be the reciprocal fraction. And then tan theta, the last one, is going to be negative 7 over 2. And then its reciprocal cotangent theta is going to be negative 2 divided by 7. All right, I want to take a look at one more, given something different, since this is our first time looking at reciprocal trig ratios. So we're going to go jump to this example here. So we have secant theta is negative 3 root 2 divided by 4, and we can see that um, the angle is between negative pi and 0. So that means that it has to be in the bottom two quadrants. Now, because I can see that secant theta is negative, Okay. meaning it has to mean it can't be in the fourth quadrant because that's where it's positive. So it must be in the third quadrant. So we're going to plot it in the third quadrant. I'm going to draw my triangle. And knowing this is secant, now remember secant is the reciprocal of cos. So if you want to write this down for yourself to help you remember a little bit easier, this will be negative 4 over 3 root 2. And remember that this is going to be our adjacent divided by our hypotenuse. So that means I'm going to place the negative 4 on the adjacent angle because remember angles are always measured inside here by the x-axis. The 3 root 2 is going to be on my hypotenuse. So I'm going to place the 3 root 2 over here on the hypotenuse. So what we don't know is why. So remember this is negative pi and this is 0. And that's why I placed it on the bottom. So we're going to find out what y is. So y squared equals 3 root 2, all squared. And that's going to be minus oh, negative 4 squared. So I have y squared, 3 root 2, all squared is 9 times 2, which is going to be 18 minus 16. y squared is 2, so y equals plus or minus root 2. Now because we're in quadrant 3, then we're only going to take y equals negative root 2. So we're going to find the other four trig ratios. So we have sine, which is going to be opposite, so this will be negative root 2 divided by the hypotenuse, 3 root 2. Its reciprocal is going to be cosecant theta. Actually, we can cancel these off to get negative one-third. And then the reciprocal will be cosecant theta equals negative three. And then tan theta is going to be opposite, which is negative root two, divided by negative four, or we can say root two over four. And then cotangent theta is going to be the reciprocal, which will then be four divided by root 2. And this will give you your other five trig ratios when you're given one of the trig ratios based on whatever uh, function that is given to you.